Hi there, it's Hannah from Daisy Farm Crafts. This is the video for my Happy Heart Hot Pad. To make these, I used Lily Sugar and Cream yarn, which is 100% cotton. I just needed one 2.5 ounce skein to make one hot pad. And I'm using a size H 5 millimeter crochet hook. So to get started, I'm just going to make a base chain of 22. So I'll start with a slip knot. And then chain 22. Then I'm going to start in the second chain from the hook and I'm just going to work one single crochet in each chain across the row. So I'm just going to insert my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops. And I'm just going to do one single crochet in each chain. So when I finish the row, I should have 21 single crochets. And after the last stitch, I am just going to chain one and turn. And I'm just going to work another row of single crochet. And I'm actually going to do four rows of single crochet before um, I start doing the puffs to make the hearts. So I'm just going to work right into the top of that stitch from the last single crochet, yarn over, pull through two, and just work one single crochet in each stitch all the way across. And I'm going to do, again, four rows of single crochet, and then I'll show you how we start doing the, the puff stitches. All right, so I just finished my four rows of single crochet. So now I'm going to chain one and turn and I'm going to work the heart from the bottom up. So this row is just going to have one puff stitch. So I'm going to start with 10 single crochets or a single crochet in each of the first 10 stitches. Ten. And then in this next stitch, in the 11th stitch, I'm going to do a puff. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, and pull up a loop. And I'm going to do that three more times. Yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, and pull up a loop. That's two. Yarn over, Pull up a loop, three, four. So I want to do that for a total of four times. Then I'm going to yarn over, let's see, you want to make sure you have one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stitches. Yarn over, pull through all the loops on your hook. And then I'm just going to do a single crochet across um, in each stitch across the rest of the row. And you can see that um, the puff is always going to stick out on this opposite side. So after I finish that puff row, I'm just going to work um, another row of just single crochet across um, because I want my puffs to be facing all direct or in the same direction. So I'm only going to work the puffs in every other row and there'll always just be a row of single crochet in between each puff row. So I'll just work a row of single crochet real fast. And after my row of single crochet, chain one and turn. And now I'm ready to do another puff row. So this time I'm going to do nine single crochet 
and then do a puff stitch and then one single crochet and then another puff. So I'm just gonna basically be making a triangle, just slowly increasing by one each time. And if you want, you can pause the video here and take a picture or a screenshot of this graph and use it to help you build the rest of the heart. You can also download it and print it from daisyfarmcrafts.com if you'd like. Um, but like I said, basically we're just kind of making a reverse triangle and then when you get to the top, we'll decrease a little bit to um, make the rounded part of the heart. And I'll just show you real quick, this is what it looks like when you're just doing the second set of puffs. Like I said, I'm just going to do one puff and then a single crochet into the next stitch and then another puff right after that. And then I'll just finish off the row, the rest of the row with single crochet. All right, so I finished my little puffy heart and then I made a second panel that is exactly the same size. So 22 stitches for the base chain and then 23 rows just of single crochet um, for the back panel. If you want, you can also do another heart and have it be double sided, completely up to you. Um, so now I'm just going to take these two and line them up evenly and combine them. And it's up to you if you want to use a tapestry needle to weave in these ends, you can. I like to just um, kind of hide them in the middle of the hot pad since I'm um, doing such a, a thick border. I'm not worried about them coming out. So I'm just gonna kind of hide these in the middle. And I'm gonna start in this corner. And I'm gonna insert my hook um, in the corner and I'm gonna go through both panels. Try to get as much in the corner as we can. And I'm just gonna pull up a loop and chain one and hide that end on the inside too. And I'm just gonna do one round of single crochet all the way around, always inserting my hook through both panels. Um, and I think on the other, the first time that I did this, I worked about 20 or 21 stitches across the side. You just wanna make it as evenly as possible. Um, so you just kind of want to pick the same spaces to work into every time. So, and make sure that your, your hop hat is all lined up with the two sides. So just insert your hook, loops through both sides and work single crochet all the way across. All right, so now I'm at the corner. I have about 20 stitches across, and now I'm going to work three single crochets into the corner. So one, all into the same space. Two, three. And then I'm just gonna keep working single crochet across this way, doing my best to keep everything as lined up as possible. And again, I think going across, you should have around 19 or 20 stitches going across. All right, so now that I'm back at the starting corner, I'm just gonna slip stitch into this first stitch. And then I'm gonna keep working in the same direction and start the back loop single crochet rib border. So I'm just gonna chain four. You can chain any number you'd like um, for how thick you want your border. 
And I'm going to start by working single crochet back down the chain. So I'm going to start in the second chain, work a single crochet, and then in the next two chains. So since I chained four, every time I work up and down this border, I'm always going to have three single crochet. And now I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch right here. And then slip stitch again into the next unworked stitch. So insert my hook, pull up a loop and pull directly through that loop. Now I'm going to turn my work like I'm turning a page in a book. So turn it toward my left hand. And from now on, I'm always going to be working in the back loops of each of these single crochet. So I'm going to skip over the first two. Those are my slip stitches. And I'm just going to work in the back loops of the single crochets. So skip the first two, work in the back loop of this one. Two. In the back loop of this last one three, and then I'm going to chain one and turn my work back toward my right hand and just repeat the same thing again, but now just always working in the back loops. So I'm going to work one, two, three, and then slip stitch into the next two unworked. So you can see the bottom, this um, stitch has been worked into, so you wanna go into the next unworked stitch. So slip stitch, and then slip stitch again into the next one, and then turn it toward my left hand. And now we work back up, skip these two, and work three back loop single crochets. And I'm just gonna work this, whoops, fix my yarn. I'm just gonna keep um, doing this same pattern all the way across, working up and down in the back loops of the single crochets, and then I will show you um, what I did for the corners. Okay, so here I am at the first corner, and sometimes it works out where you work your two slip stitches and you land right in the corner. Sometimes you'll just need to work one slip stitch um, because you want to make sure that you work up and down in the corner a few times. So I'm going to work back down, and since I'm right here at the corner stitch, I'm only going to work one slip stitch and then I'm going to turn and I'm just going to work my three single crochets back up. This time I only have one to skip over because I only did one slip stitch. So one, two, three, chain one and turn back. And now I'm going to work back down one, two, three. But instead of slip stitching into the next unworked stitch, I'm just going to work back into that corner space again. So just slip stitch once and turn and do the same thing. And so I want to work into the corner for a total of three times. And you can kind of just judge as you're going along. Sometimes um, you only need to do it two times. Um, I think I found for these hot pads it worked best if I did a total of three times of these um, ribbing posts worked or anchored into the corner. 
So this will be my third time working into this corner. So I'll just work up and down one more time and then I'll start going like I did before. So one, whoops, one, two, three, chain one, turn it back, and go one, two, three, back down. And now I'm going to work into the next two stitches and just keep going along like I was doing before. Turn, and now I have two to skip over and I'll just keep working like we did the other side. So you just want to do that in each of the corners all the way around. And then after you work the corner, you can kind of just spread it out, engage, and make sure that it's it's going around the corner enough. You don't want it to be either too bunchy or, or pulling too tight. And so I think, and then kind of once you do this row a little bit more, you'll be able to really tell. So I think that's going to be okay. All right, this is um, another heart hot pad in a different color. And I am almost, I'm finished with the border and I just wanted to show you how I'm going to finish it off. So I just um, worked into the finish working this last corner and um, I'm gonna end at the top of the border. So I'm gonna work that last single crochet going up and then I'm going to tie off. Need myself a fairly long tail. And then I'm just going to use a tapestry needle to sew this corner to the, the starting post right here. So I'm just going to use my tapestry needle and try to weave it in as evenly as possible. Kind of start here at the top. And I'm going to try to kind of keep these, these front stitches lined up so that they kind of look as even as possible. Um, so just do your best to sew this together. And then um, you can just finish weaving this end into the hot pad. And then you can um, cut off this end and then you are done. So if you want to add some finishing touches to your hot pad and just really get it all straightened out, you can either wash it and, and get it wet and then lay it out flat to dry or you can just spray it with a spray bottle and really spread it out and then um, if you have some foam board that you can pin the corners that really helps just to let it dry just to get everything all straight and the border all even. Just a nice way to finish it off, especially if you're giving it away as a gift. Thanks so much for visiting Daisy Farm Crafts. I hope you have fun making these hot pads. Um, when you're finished, please come share a picture with us on Facebook or Instagram with hashtag Daisy Farm Crafts. We would love to see. If you want the full written pattern that goes with this video, you can find a link that goes to our website um, in the description of this video. And again, you can go there if you wanted to print that graph of the heart. And um, I hope you have fun and happy crocheting.